Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can make your own cable ends for marine or automotive purposes. They're going to look like this. They slide over the end of a copper cable, usually a 4 gauge or a 2 gauge. In my case I need this for a small inverter. So this one will fit a 6 gauge wire. Now to make the 2 gauge ones it's the exact same way as making the smaller one, but instead of using quarter inch copper, you're going to use 3 8 You want to make sure you use type K or L copper, not type M. Type M is rigid copper, and type K and L is refrigeration copper, which has a thicker wall, which is what you want. So to start off, first thing you do is flatten the end, no big deal. Okay, it's perfect. You got your end right there. Now you want to measure back enough to slide the wire into the connector. You could use a mini tubing cutter like this or you could use a hacksaw, but this is better. So you want to leave, leave at least a half of an inch. So maybe five eighths. Let's go about five eighths of an inch. that in. That's good. Spin that around. Okay, now that it's cut, you have that connector. You're going to want to ream this hole out because it's flared in from, cut from the tubing cutter. You could do it with a reamer or you could use a drill bit like this. This is a unibit. Just hold it with a pair of pliers and just clean out that end. There you go. Nice and clean. Now you want to just get a little piece of sandpaper. Takes two seconds. You want to make it fit into the diameter of the pipe. Like that. Just reach in. Clean it thoroughly. Just blowing it. All right, nice and shiny. You want to do a little bit of the outside because that's where you're going to be soldering now. Now you could, I have a crimper for this, a special crimper. I could slide this on the cable right now with a piece of heat shrink and then hit it with the crimper and slide the heat shrink over and I'm done. But the best way to do it is to take a cable like this, strip it back about three quarters of an inch like that side and this will slide over and then we will solder it. Just get a little bit of sandpaper to shine it up. Just pull. For a minute. Okay, before, before we solder this, we're going to slide some heat shrink over the wire, all the way down, away from the heat. We're going to be using a propane torch. Regular plumbing flux is fine. Rosin core is even better if you have it laying around, as long as it's not an acid core. Just coat the wire nice. This, uh, once this is heated, it will clean the copper and allow the solder to flow nicely. So this is ready to go. Now we have to drill a hole where your wire is going to go. That's simple to do. Just gently hold it in your pliers. Go about a quarter of an inch from the end, 5 sixteenths.
very nice. Now you're going to take a file just to round off this edge. Here's your finished connector, as good as one you would buy in a store, and it costs you next to nothing to make because you have a foot of pipe. Take a little bit of flux, coat the inside of the connector, like that. You can put a little on the outside, it won't hurt. You want to get all of them in there carefully. Okay. Slide it down. Now what we're going to do, we're going to apply heat to the connector. It doesn't matter if the wire starts to burn, so don't worry about it. Keep 95% of heat at the end let it transfer into the wire. Solder will flow once it gets hot enough. There we go. Filling it up right now. Put a lot of solder in there. Good. Cool. Wipe it off. See, it's all filled nicely. Never come out. Let that cool before we slide the heat shrink over. Now, if you're going to use this for marine purposes, it's a good idea to use an adhesive like this, the E6000. When this is cool, you're going to put a nice layer all between the insulation and the connector where I soldered it. Put a nice layer all the way around, and then you're going to slide the heat shrink over up to there. And then you're going to heat shrink it, and it'll all dry and be waterproof. Slide it over like that. Allow this to cool.